ba, 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 ba. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and today we have yet another how to video. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to start up a Ravencoin node and support the network on your network or something like that. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. The following is a paid advertisement. Prime XBT is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018 and remained in business through the bear market. From my personal research, there are three main reasons they set themselves apart from other trading platforms. High leverage, low fees, and most importantly, privacy. Prime XBT requires no user information to start trading. The newest module called Covesting allows users to copy the trading activity of other users. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. Welcome back. So the first thing you're going to need is the hardware. Down in the description will be Amazon affiliate links for a Raspberry Pi. The kit is optional, but I highly recommend it. It comes with a case as well as some heat sinks for the Pi. And of course the power adapter, which just makes life a lot more simple. So definitely check out the affiliate link down there for that. And then you'll need an SD card. While a 32 gigabyte will work for now, as the node gets larger and larger, I would recommend just going ahead and grabbing the 64 gigabyte SD card so that you're good to go. Finally, you'll probably need an SD card reader. It just depends on the kind of PC you're building it from. If you have a laptop with an SD card reader, then you're probably fine and you aren't going to need to do that. But if you don't and you just have USB plugs on your desktop, then you will need an SD card reader. The 3.0 is going to be recommended just because the speed to write it will be faster. So there you go. Next, you're going to need these applications. You're going to need the Raspberry Pi OS and the basically the imager for that. And you can download that for Windows, Mac or Ubuntu. And then you will need putty to basically connect to the system from there. So first step is going to be downloading the Raspberry Pi imager and installing it. Once you have it installed, we're going to set up the USB SD card reader and just plug your SD card in and then plug that into your computer. Once that's plugged in, it may ask you to format. You shouldn't need to because the imager will do that. So you can just do a quick Cortana search and look for the Raspberry Pi imager. Or of course, if you have already clicked it to run, then you should be good to go. At this point, the imager is pretty simple. We're gonna click choose OS and we're gonna do Raspberry Pi other. And we want the port of Debian with no desktop environment because at this point, a desktop environment is just going to use more resources and you will not need it. Then you're going to click choose the SD card and then you're going to click write. It will say, are you sure? And you're going to click yes. Okay. So now that it's complete, it says you can remove it from the reader. Okay. So now that we removed it and then put it back in, we have access to Raven node E drive. And here what we're going to want to do is just make sure we have file extensions on so we can do file explorer options. Under file explorer options, we're going to click the view tab and make sure that we uncheck hide extensions for known file types. Then we're going to right click within the directory and we're going to do new text document. We're going to get rid of the .txt and we're going to just name it SSH. This is going to allow us to get access to the system without having to actually have a keyboard and a mouse or a keyboard and a monitor hooked up to it. So now that we have that, we are going to go ahead and remove the SD card and put it into the Raspberry Pi, making sure that the Pi is powered off when you do that. And so we're just going to slide it right in. Ta-da! And then we're going to plug the power in and then you should see a little yellow light start blinking and that means that it is reading the drive. So now that that is booting up, what we are going to do is download and install PuTTY. A link will be down in the description below for PuTTY. And you can just basically install it and then get it up and running. Now to find the actual drive, you can use something like advanced IP scanner, or you can log into your router. 
Either way will work. Alrighty, so if you log into your router, you should be able to see the device. As you can see here, we have the 192.168.1.195, and that's what we'll need to go into PuTTY. Additionally, you may want to go ahead and update your ports while you are in here. It will vary based on router, but it should be under something like port forwarding or NAT gaming. And as you can see here, we have just opened up port 8767, and that will need to be done on your router side. Okie doke, so now that we have the IP address, we're gonna go ahead and get logged in. How do you like that background? Okay, so once you're at the login screen, the default username is Pi, and the default password is Raspberry. And once logged in, you do, there are some suggestions I could make, like creating a new user. And if you want to get into that, let me know. That's some basic Ubuntu stuff that I think you guys should be able to know at this point. But if not, and you guys want me to start going through basic Linux command line stuff, we can go into that. This is also a node. I'm not super, super worried about security for it because we aren't storing anything in it no personal wallet data or anything like that so there you go all right so we are going to run a wget now and this is my nema on of course github and he has created a super simple to use script to get you up and going of course the command will be in the description below once downloaded we will need to also get the check status script as well so we'll just run that links will be in the description once again we will need to adjust permissions for both of the script files with the chmod command and then we will need to install the node by running the first script that we downloaded and it'll say first thing we need to do is update upgrade your raspberry pi do i want to continue yes and this is basically just running a get app update at this point. Pretty much continuing through all this, you will say yes. And it will get everything you need. Okay, this point is going to ask for which version you would like to download. And that's going to be version 4.3.0. But you should always check the GitHub for the latest node version. Link to that will be down in the description. Alrighty, so there is one additional step you can take if you would like the blockchain or the chain to sync quicker. And that is going to be basically grabbing a file from Ravenland and unzipping it. You can do that with a wget command and it will download basically the blockchain up to date at the end of 2019 so you don't have to update the entire thing. Okie dokie, so once you have completed the sync, you will just need to go ahead and run a couple more commands, which will be linked down in the description. I accidentally forgot to continue recording, so I'm gonna show you an example, but it will just be the commands. So the next thing that you need to do is going to be unzipping the file that we just downloaded, which is the tar-xvzf and then space blockchain.tar.gz. And then once that has completed, you will basically press enter. Once that is completed, you will type in rm and remove the zip file or the compressed folder so that you can save some space with an rm command and then blockchain.tar.gz. The final step is going to be starting the node with Raven D and then space and, you will see the process started there and which process number it is. And then to check the status, you will use this command that will be in the description. And it is that script that we created earlier. Don't freak out if it says error code 28. This will be resolved once it starts syncing. It may take a little bit. It will then move into a section where it starts syncing the blockchain and you will see blocks and a block count. And then finally, it will say synced and running. Make sure you give it enough time to go ahead and sync and you will be good to go. To stop the node, all you will need to do is type in raven-cli space stop 
and that will stop the node. Okie dokie, so it's that simple. It is very time consuming, but you know, while your Pi is syncing and doing all of these things and going through the script, you can be off eating some pie. Maybe some raving pie, is that a thing? I don't think that would be tasty. No, it wouldn't. Anyway, so just so you guys understand, you are not earning any cryptocurrency doing this, so why would you do it? Well, you do it to support the network. And the more people that support the network, the faster other end users' wallets will sync and other applications and so on will sync to the chain. This is good for you if you enjoy Ravencoin and why you should do it. It's relatively cheap coming in at under $100 to get everything configured and set up on a Raspberry Pi. And there is an option to do it in VPS if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comment section below. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.